Anchors up. Sales at full. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? Doing all right, Jared. How are you doing today? I am, uh, hold on. Flaps to 50%. Power set to take off. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today? Nomad doesn't like it when the, the, the Navy talks. So I think he's trying to give us an alternative. Yeah. Yeah. We're, yeah. We're, sti we're sticking with us. We're sticking with what we do here. Um, this is our Scarlet and Great episode. And oh boy, Jared. Oh boy, do we have an episode today, don't we? Yeah, I, I think there's a couple different ways. I And I'm I'm very... What, why, why are you effing? There's a couple different ways that that I, and I haven't listened to anyone's like post game. I can't listen. I can't listen to another podcast post game because then I'll just especially if it's Tony or Tom, because they're goaded like they're the best. Right. And if, if I listen to anything they do, I will just like find myself repeating what they say. Um, mm hmm. So I haven't listened. I don't know like what other people are. Um, even Tom Orr said the coaching deserved an F. Oh, we'll, we'll, get uh, we'll, we'll get to that. We'll get to that soon. We'll get there. We'll get there. Um, I disagree. But so I'm just curious, like, uh, how are we going to fall in the grand scheme of like other people's reactions to this game? I have a very Mix opinion. I feel like I'm, I feel like my opinion on this is going to be pretty moderate. Um, it's going to be somewhat moderate. It's, it's like I don't feel like I'm coming into this too hot or too or too cold. Um, I don't know, Kyle. Just general vibe. I, I mean, other than the game just being frustrating, right? I mean, because it was mm -hmm. it was frustrating. Um, yeah. and, and there are, uh, Jared. You know how we feel about. Uh, stop it. The. <laughs> um obviously the game was frustrating and, and like we'll talk about the weather and we'll talk about a lot of things but as far as like your feeling about ohio state about the players about the coaching like where where are you falling as far as like your feelings coming out of the game generally speaking yeah it's I watched the game a second time, Jared, and uh, yeah, it didn't make me feel any better than the first time. <laughs> I, would, I was hoping to learn a little, little more about the game, but I, I think it's the same, same reaction, same thoughts that I had watching it the first time, and it was just, it was just pathetic. I, I'll just, I'll just be honest. It was just a pathetic showing from Ohio State from what we expected here. Here we are, ninth game of the season. Yes, yes, the weather was terrible it was so windy and couldn't even pass the ball but it, you couldn't run worse shit yes yes ohio state was able to rush it for almost six yards a carry but i didn't tell the yeah. whole story of what we saw in this game here four for 15 third downs uh put up 21 points only 13 first downs in the entire game yeah, exactly. Wolf. Yeah, not not a good not a good showing here. And you and you vis you can see both sides of the ball here. Northwestern dominated Ohio State on both sides of the of the ball there. So a couple of thoughts. One of the two teams, who was going to be better prepared to play in like tropical storm conditions. I mean, just neither. let's neither team. Exactly. So what does that do? It neutralizes the talent and it neutralizes the teams, which is essentially what we saw here, right? Northwestern had like one good drive and they got a touchdown. And, like, were they better at avoiding three and outs than Ohio State? Yes, they were. 
Uh, did they have more yards than Ohio State? Uh, did, did they finish? I know late in the game they did. Did they finish with more yards? Two more? Two less? Two more. So we can we can look at all that and we can be upset by it. And you should. I don't know if you should. You how should. often? How often is a, I mean, elephant in the room? Alabama lost. Other elephant. Other ele, 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 elephant in the room. Um, oh, wow. That everyone listened to the Tuesday episode. We'll talk about that. Uh, yeah, lost. Oh, okay. Oh, sorry. Go elephant. On. Elephant in the room. Elephant in the room. 30 sustained wind at 30 miles an hour gust up to 50. We're talking about a smaller stadium. That's not super protected from the wind. We you know we're right off of the lake. Again, gust at 50 miles an hour. Did you see the pregame? Did you see the pregame uh, of the kickers trying to kick field goals where the ball was yeah. literally coming back at them? Yeah, it was quite uh, hilarious. Ryan Day in the, in the press conference said, and, you know, rule one, the doctor lies. Uh, acknowledged. But if he, one of the reasons he addressed that, like, there were so many sacks, or excuse me, not sacks, drops, why there were so many drops was that even when the ball was getting there, it was getting there, like, not spiraled it was like knuckleballing right the ball was yeah. not being delivered in a way that was easily catchable uh they couldn't throw the ball more than 10 yards downfield without the pass being completely disruptive um and like you and then you can say well but they were terrible at running what does that what does that have to do with the running well if you can't Jared is a fan of uh, stop it. What? <laughs> yes, that yes they were. Um, yes they were, Stuart. The point I'm trying to make here is that even the running game then in turn is struggling because if you can't throw the ball more than ten yards down the field, then the other team can essentially put nine ten guys in the box. And Ohio State really just isn't equipped to to deal with that. One of the, you know, it, and this has been the case for Ohio State for a long time. This is not unique to Ryan Day. It is not unique to 2022. But, but did they do that? Yes, Northwestern did that. Their safety, they had, they were playing man on man, uh, with the wide receivers, and, or did our O line stink? Um, the interior of the offensive line, um, is still having issues. Uh, I'm not going to like, I'm not going to like, I'm not totally going to just be like, oh, but no, that the doesn't, the, the, everything. Cause they were having issues like for three weeks on the interior of the offensive line has been having issues three weeks on now. We need, so that's I'm not, a big, I, that's a big concern, right? It's now. a big that's concern. Big concern. It's a big concern. Absolutely. But here, here's here's an here's an interesting uh, stat, hold, Jared. But 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 real quick, Ohio State was just not equipped to deal with you know ten guys up in the box, nine guys up in the box. They they Ohio and, State and, and Ohio State's been in a hard place between a rock and a hard place for a real, real long time. Ohio State wants to both compete nationally and win Big Ten games. And the unfortunate part of that is you kind of need opposite teams to do that. Because, you, you, you hold on, I, let me finish this. You need opposite teams to do that. In order to win in the Big Ten consistently, you need to have like huge linebackers and big defensive linemen and run blocking safeties. And you need to have these giant tight ends and you kind of need to be a little big and a little slow, but in order to compete nationally, you have to be ultra fast and ultra athletic. Um, you mean run stopping safeties. What did I say? Did I say something different? Yes, I did run blocking. Okay. Yes. Run stopping safeties. 
this is and when you get into a game like this where Northwestern has tight ends the size of offensive tackles and linebackers the size of your defensive ends it gets and then you get into a situation in which like passing is practically off the table that puts you in a really hard spot because Northwestern is better conditioned to essentially say, screw it. We're Navy today. Northwestern played this game like they were Navy. But still Jared, like this is Ohio state has the better athletes. They have the better coach coaches, but in this, in this game here, Ohio state coaching staff did not set up this team for success. I agree. They knew what, they knew what the weather was going to be. I agree. And it seemed like it seemed like they were surprised once they stepped off the bus. Like, oh, shit, it's windy here. I it's agree. It's rainy here. I don't know what to do. Oh, let, let's throw the ball 26 times and see what happens. I agree. I agree with everything I, you're saying, Kyle. It's, it's like what Coach Knowles, it's what Coach Knowles said at the beginning of the season. He said that if if the defense does not, and and verbatim here but pretty much if the defense does not perform well during the during the game that's on him he didn't prepare the team and that's what we saw here the team well the defense played pretty well i think the defense overall played well there's there's definitely areas like certain third down situations that and early tackling was an issue but i think overall the defense did did pretty well held a team under 300 yards but the offense, it, it, it just seemed so unprepared for this game. It was so, so bad. I like the, the, the game plan was, yeah, you, you said it. They acted so, like so, they were, we were talking about what the weather could be when we recorded Know Your Enemy on Wednesday. And you're absolutely right, Kyle. It does. They, they, you're right. It showed up like they were surprised that there were 50 degree gusts. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You're absolutely right in that point. Here's, to be fair, well, I believe if, if, Jared did call this Northwestern game the possible road upset during the wasteland. I did. Guys, l l l take a moment to be thankful. Take a moment to be thankful. This was this year's Iowa Purdue game. This was your, this is your, I'm going to, I'm going to make it better. This is your game. later. This is, this is late in the season road trip to the big 10 West. Make this it, is what this was. Better, and you got out of better, it with a win. I'm going to make it a better um, uh, comparison. This is Ohio state, Illinois, 2006. This was, this was when Troy Smith won the Heisman. It was the first Saturday in November went on the road to face a two and seven Illinois team, got out with a 17 to 10 ugly. Exactly. Game. Randy, your, your Heisman winner, Troy Smith threw only 108 yards in that game. Did not throw a touchdown, had an interception that game. This, this is, this is, this was CJ Stroud's, um, Troy Smith, Illinois game. Uh, didn't fields have an absolutely atrocious game uh in 2020 as well i forget Probably. who they i forget who they played but it was like bad it was like bad bad was it northwestern North indiana well sun card said indiana no it was not the big 10 championship no. uh he did not play well in that game either but no he had like an abysmal game i uh, like he was like fumbling and intercepting it was we were forced to show our hand on the quarterback run gross yeah, Ryan Day, and it, uh, once again, the doctor lies. Ryan Day proved what I've been saying all along, and the doctor doesn't lie when uh, he agrees with what I've been saying all along. In this, so when it confirms what I believe, then the doctor's not lying. Those are the that's that's, that's the subcategory of the rule. Um, Ryan Day's been Ryan Day confirmed what I've been saying all along. C.J. Stroud wants to run. Ryan Day won't let him. I've been saying this since the beginning of last year. It's not that CJ Stroud doesn't want to run. It's that Ryan Day does not want him to run. Been saying it for a year and a half. 
Well, and by a half, I mean a half of a season, not literally six months. But you, y'all, y- y- y'all get no, what you that, mean. His, no, they, they were right. It, it was the Big Ten championship game where he he was atrocious. He was atrocious in that game. Was it really? 12 for 27, 114 yards, no touchdowns, and two interceptions. I could have, I would have sworn. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, yeah, my memory sucks, Nomad. I probably should have trusted you. It was his worst game that year. Okay, everyone's saying I'm wrong. Um, fair. My memory sucks. Um, <laughs> Julian Fleming had a bunch of drops. Um, yeah, and so, I mean, let's not just single out. So did uh, Emeka Abuka. Stover, Stover did as well. Uh, so did Stover. Basically everyone except Everybody. Marvin Harrison Jr. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. but even Marvin Harrison Jr. and C.J. Stroud, and I think C.J. Stroud was correct, they by the, the way. Yeah, there were a couple just totally errant throws. And yeah, I, I this game. That's what have, I mean. Yeah, I guess if you're going to have one of these games during the year, let it be the worst team you play. That's true. That's true. <laughs> um, or it's thank, or it, thank God it almost, the defense played well. It this been last year. Ohio State might lose this game. Oh, they would have. I, I well, think they I don't know. Northwestern's offense is pretty terrible. Um, and well, like they couldn't throw the ball either. And that was Ohio State's main issue was well, stopping I mean, the almost, pass. They were almost 50% on third down conversions, Jared. I, I <laughs> yeah, but I mean, even even though Northwestern was nine for twenty on third downs, anytime they went for a fourth down, Ohio State stopped them. There was yeah. at least that. And by the, it seems like this is, there's a certain section of the fan base that like will just pick one thing and then that's their opinion for the rest of the year. You know what I mean? Whether it's like yeah. last year, everyone hating on Tommy Eichenberg, y'all look real silly right about now. Um, th- this year it's just like, oh, this team isn't tough. Like this is that's just what like all the lazy. Anytime Ohio State doesn't play well, this team is soft. Man, did you see them stop in those fourth down runs? To be fair, I always look silly. Yes, you do, Sun Card, but that's why we like you. Yeah. There, all right, Jared. Uh, let's let's go. Let's go ahead and um, we'll continue this discussion. But let's go ahead and uh, start grading the the different groups here starting with the coaching staff as a whole and uh people in people in the chat here uh yeah i think nomad and spikes is already uh <laughs> very well ahead of me here but yeah go ahead and um rate a to f here what would you grade the coaching staff as a whole and as a whole i'd probably give the coaching staff a a, a d plus a d plus overall here i think i'm gonna save like my my bad grade specifically for the offensive coaching um and that's why that's why mine's a d plus jared because i because i do th- i do think there was a lot of things a lot of little things done correctly in this game um so i'm not, I'm not gonna trash the overall coaching i, I wait till we get to the offensive coaching i'll 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 I'll, I have my, I have my, I have my, I have my right, big, so my big ugly red stamp coming for that one. But the overall the coaching, just like a C, I think is fine. All right. All right. So let's, let's do the offensive coaching. I know, I know a lot of people in the chat here have their, have their opinions on the offensive coaching. And, you know, I might, I might agree. I might agree. I'm, I'm giving the, giving an the M minus, staff. a C minus, an F. <laughs> You run, you have a, a D, total of you have another a total D of under 300 total yards against one of the worst defenses. And yes, I know weather has a lot to play into it, but so the talent that this team is, and you only put up 280 yards of offense here. F F. I, I think, I think that's harsh. Um, expectations jared expectations knowing what this team can do the talent that this team has and it was pathetic it was pathetic enough so but with expectations you also have to take into consideration everything you have to take into Mm -hmm. consideration the weather you have to take into consideration the lack of healthy running backs that they have you need to take into consideration a lot of things. 
uh, as yeah, you it, success, it, as, it, as you as you correctly pointed out earlier in the show, though, they should have been better prepared for the weather. It's not like this storm front, the, this these weather conditions came out of nowhere. We literally knew this might be the situation, like I said, last Wednesday. So they're still going to get a low grade. They're still going to get a low grade for that. Don't get me wrong. But as Nomad points out in the chat, Day was willing to change it up. We did I'm... see a different form of the offense in the second half. We saw them take the training, the at least the running version of the training wheels, off of CJ Stroud. They let him go do his thing. Um, I think the play calling in light of the weather, uh, they they earned such a low, uh, why they... Yeah, why they learn why they earn such a low grade. Yeah, I'm I, I agree, Randy. Um Ohio State was not equipped to to play this game. Um they mm. they needed they they needed to get they needed to get one of their backup tackles a tight end number. They you know what I mean? Like these are the things you had to prepare for beforehand. You you needed to you needed to get some of your tackles some like tight end eligible numbers and you had to get ready to go do what Northwestern did. But Northwestern why? knew what was coming and they, like I said, they turned themselves into Navy for a game. Yeah, exactly. It Nomad. Was, so, so it go so do it. Obvious, it was so obvious seeing that mine Williams was not a hundred percent here, but yet he got the carries. There's no other running back that got the carry. And there's so many guys to be like, give another running back a shot. Just give well, them a I shot. Think, I mean, we, we, we've we seen that in the past and it turned out pretty well. I There's very rarely, there was very rarely that when a backup running back for Ohio State came in, when a your starter struggled, that backup shows up. It's that next man up here. Nomad like, asks, I, where's I was, Dallin? Spikes says, who was available? Uh, Dallin Hayden was available as was, um, yeah, they, they had Chip Trainum Chip. available to play running back as well. The question has to be, has to sort of be how ready are those guys to play a full offense? Then that goes back to the coaching staff and not getting this team ready. Then if they're not comfortable having a backup running back, be it your fourth string running back, not yes. game ready for a one win team here that's an issue that's a big issue someone said like that this, day oh, is like turnover this, adverse like so my in place staff was just was just sleepwalking like oh yeah well we've got injuries it's it's northwestern we'll, we'll we'll figure it out next game like i feel like that they did not put any effort into this game until halftime when they decided to make some adjustments to eventually win. I, just, I mean, like maybe Ryan Day that. knows something we don't know as far as like, can is, is Hayden capable of running in? Okay. One, like everything's wet. He's a freshman. You know, it's a situation in which you're going to be like, does Hayden have fumble issues in practice? We haven't seen it in his late game carries. I'm, I'm just, I'm just acknowledging that maybe Day knows something we don't. We don't. Maybe. Maybe. I, you know, but but it's, I, I need to grade the offensive coaching staff. Yes. It's still like a it's still like a D plus for me because they did make good adjustments. They did win the game um, and they had just a lot going against them. Mm -hmm. All right. Moving on here. We're going to go through. How do you know if you don't try? Bit, Nomad, bit this is one of those games in which a in which a poorly timed turnover can cost you the game. Yeah, and then surprisingly for how how bad the weather was, there was zero turnovers. There were zero turnovers in this game. Maybe, so no matter, you, you ask, how do you know if you don't try? Maybe they have. Maybe they had the ball soaking at practice, and maybe they yeah, sent they Hayden... And maybe they sent Hayden into a, you know, a straight down the line and maybe he fumbled it too often. I, I don't know. And I'm just saying, like, we, we do have to acknowledge that we're not at practice and we don't see everything. Yeah, All right. we, we do have to move on here. So let's let's get on to the quarterback uh, rating here. Quarterback as a whole. Yeah, 10 for 26, only 76 yards looks terrible on on paper here. He did add on 79 rushing yards. Uh, career best at Ohio State here. 
but have to take in consideration uh, a lot of, uh, not a lot, but there was quite a few of those passes were not caught. There were quite a few drop passes, which is very un uncharacteristic for this team here. So which I'm not going to, I'm, which... not, I'm not going to grade them terribly. I, I, I'll stay like a C minus for, for Stroud. I think there was some poor decision making for Stroud and yeah, it, I, I think he'll get better from this game, but definitely probably his, definitely his worst performance at Ohio state. So I'd say like a CC minus. I think y'all are being, uh, you know, Spike said, you said C, uh, Spike says C plus Randy says C he rushed for some yards, had some passes dropped and fought bad weather. Randy, to me, you said C, but then you gave an argument as to why it should be more than a C. The quarterback, some guard. Yeah, just, well, yeah, CJ Stroud, but just the quarterback group. Um, I, I, I don't even know if it's fair to grade him. It is. Especially from it a is. passing standpoint. I, I give him a, I'll give him a, like a B plus. I, I, I know he didn't perform well, but I just don't see watching the game anywhere where it's like, well, it's his fault. 50, 50 mile an hour wind gust. What's he supposed to do? Yeah, he kept his composure. He ran well when he was actually allowed to do it. He saved the game. In many ways, he saved the game. He got a crucial first down on a run. He got the biggest play of the game on his feet. What what else do you want from him? I throw right. that ball on target every time, but I've been taught how to account for wind. Uh, right. 50 mile an hour wind gust is not something you easily account for. All right. I'm going to grade the offensive line here. Zero sex in this game. You do the team does rush for over 200 <laughs> yards. Does rush for over 200 yards in this game, which they haven't rushed for over 100 yards in the previous two games. So I mean that's that's a plus here. Uh, so as an offensive line overall, I I give them maybe a a B, B minus something like that. There were definitely there were definitely times in this game, especially in short yardage too, some critical third and shorts, even on fourth and short, the offensive line just got pushed around, got pushed around when they shouldn't have been. So yeah, I would say a B minus for this offensive line. I mean, there are only five guys and they were going against stacked boxes. You can't hold, you can't completely hold that against them. I do think there were individuals on the offensive line who struggled, but I also think that there were more individuals on the offensive line who played very well. CJ Stroud um, was kept clean most of the game. Um, move, uh, tight end assistance on the inside. More tight end assistance on the inside. Uh, by the way, just Spikes made me literally laugh out loud. You know who, he says, you know who? hold on, hold on. Spikes literally made me laugh out loud. He goes, that wasn't a win. That was a tropical depression. Yeah. Huh. I, I mean, that, seriously, like, I know it sounds like it's an excuse, but you know who, you 50, know who we 50 should... mile an hour wind gusts are nothing to be ignored when you can't throw the ball 10 yards without the, but, and again, this is why, this is why Ryan Day said there were so many dropped passes is that the ball was curving and wobbling even on throws as short as 10 yards mm -hmm. all right what would you get grade the offensive line then jared um i'd say like a b I, I think you're right because there are individuals who played well there are individuals who played poorly and the box was just stacked the entire game so even though the running backs did not perform well um mm -hmm. then the blocking was not good i just I, I can't trash the offensive line for that. All right. All right. Then we're moving on to the running backs. Uh, I mean, mine Williams here, uh, grading mine Williams. And I'd, I'd give him a B minus here. There were certain plays. Like I think he might've been tunnel vision on some of those runs there, but when you rewatch again, hindsight's 2020 20 here, but when you, when you rewatch the game or watch a, um, instant replay of of the play he just ran 
if you actually saw the cutback, he had a lot of green. He just, I, I don't know what was what was up with Mayan Williams in that game, but there was times when he should have just went east and west instead of, instead of side to side line there. Like it's, I don't know, the decision making on which hole to go to. He's uh, Mayan he Williams. Doesn't... It was it was not his it was not his night there. Yeah, I meant north to south. Yes. Yes. Sorry. Um that's not who Mayan Williams is, for what it's worth. Like he he sees the hole, he goes to the hole. If you want someone who's gonna bust things outside, who has like that great lateral jump cut, who can bust things outside much more easily, that's why you that's that's what Trey's for. Um, I do think this would have been a better Trey game, but yes, Trey was yes. hurt. Um, it, def it definitely would have been a better uh, Trey Henderson game here. I, I feel like the run, the run play play calling should have been more of not not a um, zone read, but more of like what Nor what Northwestern did. You just you just have your blocks and you go straight towards the the lineman or the linebacker that you're trying to block and let your running back get to those three, four yards there. And that, that's no, what I, I, I need, Western was doing. I need, I need to, I need to destroy nomad for a moment. So get a running back to who can, if Trey is hurt, have another available. You, you mean like Evan Pryor? Is that, is that who you mean? Is okay. It's just just curious. Do you mean do you mean someone like Evan Pryor? Come on now. Ohio State was down of their top four running backs. Well, their top five. Of their top five running backs, three of them were not available. Who would you grade the running backs, Jared? There were no holes to run to. Um, and when there were, I thought my, I thought Mayan did well. So I think, uh, I think your B minus is fair. Okay. All right. Moving on here. Wide receivers here. I'd give the wide receivers, uh, a D I'd give them a D here. Way too many, uh, drops here. None of separation on a lot of, a lot of the play calling or a lot of the plays that were developed here. And you talked about, oh, they're putting nine, 10 in the box there. These wide receivers should have gotten open here. They they should have, and they didn't. And any chance that the ball came to them, if your name wasn't Marvin Harrison Jr., you dropped a pass or two or three. Yeah, let me was, let it me. A, it, it was a terrible showing from the wide receivers. Let me say let me let me let me say Four. it like. Let let me say it like this. If you can't throw the ball further than ten yards down the field, that leaves you a lot less field to get open. Okay, what did, and then what did Northwestern do? They didn't throw the ball well. They threw better than CJ Stroud did. How? By throwing swing passes, by doing a lot of that shit that we didn't want Ohio State to do. If you listen to the show last week, uh, by did did they? Literally threw for three more yards. It, okay, they threw for three more yards, but of the times that they threw it, they threw a lot better percentage than C.J. Stroud did. Again, because they were throwing high, because they were throwing high, because they were throwing high percentage was passes. 10, was ten for fourteen. Right. It was ten for fourteen. Because they were throwing swings and screens. Okay, but. But it didn't do any better. It did three yards better. So congrats on your completions if they didn't go anywhere. All right, what would you grade the wide receivers here, Jared? I'm just saying, like, I think it's easy to trash the receivers here. But if you can't throw the ball more than 10 yards down the field. And by the way, this also counts the outside. We talk about how good Northwestern's linebackers actually are on a terrible team. They actually have really nice linebackers. You can't then even throw to the outside very easily because, again, a little bit, of, a little bit of geometry. It takes it's a lot more yards to throw outside as opposed to inside. 
So it's hard to throw to the sidelines. It's hard to throw more than 10 yards down the field. What do you actually even have available to throw? You say, oh, the wide receivers can't get open. Where on the field could they actually even have caught the ball? And then when the ball was getting to him, it was curving and knuckleballing, which is why we saw those drops. I think it's easy to trash the receivers here, but I, I want to take uh, so like a B minus is fine to me. Um, I I kind of want to take the entire offensive side of this game. Th throw it in the burn pile and just move on like the, the I learned nothing about our offense this game. Absolutely nothing like I take nothing away from this game offensively. It just totally doesn't even matter to me, if I'm being honest. All right. These um, guys are supposed to be elite pass catchers. They are elite pass catchers, yeah. but I've already addressed Not, why that doesn't game matter game. in this game. All right. Tight ends here. I, I'd say C. I'd say C for the tight ends here. Nothing, nothing spe spectacular, nothing terrible. A couple, couple of drop passes. So I'd say a C. I, that's fine. I agree. Okay. All right. Moving to the defensive side. So defensive coaching as a whole, I, I probably give the defensive coaching a, probably a B, B minus somewhere around there. Uh, there were definitely times that were, we were kind of just hitting our desks, sitting our chairs here be like, what kind of play calling are we calling? We can't stop the wildcat. Um, formation and their running back is run or their quarterback's running all over us here, but they, they made adjustments at the halftime here and in seven points, <laughs> they only seven points. seven points this in this game here. So I, I would say a B overall, there, there's definitely things to need to work on when it comes to a mobile quarterback, but I think overall, yeah, it was, it was, it was fine. The defense did fine. They did what they needed to. Uh, I don't think that uh, no matter. I don't think their quarterback leaving the game had that big of an effect. Helinski barely played. He only yeah. had like three attempts. Um, mm, yep. I I don't think it. I don't think it played that big of a factor. Um, the defense. He is. Good. He is a good runner, but I think that it was. It was. It was late in the game. It was too late in the game for it to have mattered that much. Yeah, it was when the game was over already. It was late in the game. Yeah, what? Yeah, what? Gangland and Randy are saying. Defensive coaching. Um, I I think it's like a I think it's like a B plus. I, I think they should have been. I'm knocking them down a couple grades because I think they should have been prepared. Again, Northwestern went into this game saying, "Hey, we're Navy." We're Navy. This if, if, if it had to have struck someone else that this felt like watching a military academy game when it's just so fr like, you know, you're not going to lose to Navy. You know, you're not going to lose to Navy, but God, it's just so frustrating watching the game because they're so good at just getting four yards every time. You're not going to lose. They're not going to beat you doing that, but God, they're going to make you tear your hair out. And I, so I, I'm going to I will knock the defensive coaching um, a bit for not being more prepared that Navy was going to do that, given the weather. Um, and they should have this should have been a game again where they were more prepared for that, I think. But they made great halftime adjustments. Um, they completely shut them down in the second half. So I'm not going to totally kill them. Uh, I think a B plus is fair. Okay. All right, defensive ends here. I I think defensive ends played pretty well overall. Uh, what were the what were the final stats here? So defensive ends, uh, JT had four tackles. One of them a tackle for loss. Harrison had three, one for a loss. Uh, John Baptiste had two. I, yeah, I, I thought overall they did they did pretty well. So I'd I'd probably give the defensive ends probably an A minus. Yeah, uh, JT almost had another pick six. <laughs> that would have been awesome. But in retrospect, we didn't know it at the time. In retrospect, it would have helped a lot. It was too early. Uh, it was too too early in the game for us to realize how big of a deal that actually would have been. Um, 
It would have made the game look a hell of a lot different. Yeah. By the way, Ohio State should have taken the wind in the first half. In the with the in the they won the toss, didn't they? No, Northwestern did. But Northwestern deferred. They deferred. If I'm Ohio State, I let Northwestern have the ball and I take the wind. If they could have gotten big, if they could have gotten up big, that would have just like ended the game quickly. Mm -hmm. I think that means they choose to kick. No, that means they defer their decision until the second half. The second half. Yeah. You, they, they just say we want to receive. That just means I want to receive the ball or I want to make my decision, which normally translates into, I want the ball in the second half. So yeah. they're just saying they're deferring their choice to the second half. Ohio State can do whatever they want at that point. They can choose to kick. They can choose to receive. They can choose which side of the field they want to defend. Ohio State can choose whatever they want at that point. All right. Um, defensive ends. Yeah, I think a, a, I think you're a minus a minus a plus. Um, I'm. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna go with a solid A. I think Harrison had another good game. I think JT had another good game. I'm gonna give him a solid A. Okay. All right. Defensive tackles. I I, I don't I don't know how to grade the. You're right on time, Matt. In in this game here, um, I mean Vincent had a great game. He had five tackles in this game here. He he was fantastic. Uh, Tyleek had a pair of tackles here. I, I'd i probably give him the same grade, maybe like an A-. I, I think overall the defensive tackles did did just as well as the defensive ends. Yeah. Uh, and and I, I sort of put early run defense issues more on the coaching than I do the players. Um, which I think we, again, we saw that in the second half when adjustments were, were made, right? Once they yep. were sort of put into a better opportunity su to succeed in the second half, we saw that. So yeah, I think your, I think your A minus or just a straight A is, is fine by me. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. And linebackers here. Tommy Eichenberg, Jared, 13 tackles, 10 of those were solo tackles. <laughs> to answer your question, Nomad, that. <laughs> uh, no, I, I thought the linebackers, again, played well. There should have been a third linebacker on the field. This should have been a two safeties yes. with Cody Simon on the field game. Yes, um, it should have been. That would have helped. Yeah, I, I think I think Knowles needs to acknowledge that some games are going to be those games in the big 10, which he has acknowledged, but I think he needs to acknowledge that that's going to be the case more often than he's currently acknowledging. Does that make sense? Um, yes. But when, when you have, again, I'm going to say it for the hundredth time, 30 degrees sustained winds, excuse me, 30 mile an hour sustained winds, 50 mile an hour wind gust. I think you don't need three. Say, I don't think you need five defensive backs. Yeah, I got there eventually. I don't think that's a game in which you need five defensive backs. I think I think that's a I think that's a game in which you need Cody Simon, Tommy Eichenberg, and Steel Chambers all three on the field at the same time. Yep. This wasn't a good O line when when we went up that we went up against, right? Uh they have an elite left tackle. Yes, that that's it. it I'm not going to say tackle. I'm not gonna say the entire offensive line's good. It's not. Um, it, it's not. Uh, but yep. it is. Uh, they do have an amazing left tackle for what that's worth. Like a straight yeah, so up first round NFL draft pick left tackle. Yeah, I'd probably linebackers. I'd probably say an A minus as well. I think an A minus. I give them an A again. I think I think a lot of the struggles with the running game were schematic and not on the players themselves. All right, moving on over cornerbacks. You know, one one of the things about being a cornerback is not having your name called. Yeah, and I don't I don't think we've really heard many many times that we're that a corner's name was brought up, which is which is good, which is good. Well, Denzel so, Burke actually made a couple good tackles 
for what I mean, and not. And I, I only remember one of those being in pass coverage. I'm talking like, you know, Northwestern was trying to run on the perimeter. Um, and I think there may have been a couple bubbles, a couple screens um, yeah. that he make that he made good tackles on. Uh, JK did have. I wonder if, if did, did he had some sort of stupid penalty. I can't remember what it was off the top of my head. Does anyone in chat remember what it was? Um but yeah, no, no Cam Brown again for this game. Um, yeah, so but I it's all it's yeah, an A minus I think is is good for me here. Okay, all right, and the safeties, um, I'd probably give them an A as well. A uh, couple, a couple of uh, well, there's one in particular. It was a was it Burke? No, I don't think it was Burke. It was somebody else. Maybe it was Ransom. Yeah, it was Ransom who had that. Uh, touchdown saving tackle i think it was in the third quarter i want to say it was uh they're running running back um got to got past the second level and then ransom was there and made a shoelace uh tackle for, uh, and, to save that touchdown yeah and, and we saw uh hickman uh playing up a lot uh, you know sort of like if you need a, th a little bit of a third linebacker they brought hickman up some uh, so that and he was uh, doing very well in that role. Did he have I feel like he had a lot of tackles just per my memory of watching the game. Yeah. Hickman had 10 tackles, six of them solo. Um, Hickman had a good game. I thought the safeties played well. I think ideally this isn't a game in which seeing him at ideally, I would say this is a game in which like I wouldn't want there to be a lot of safeties getting tackles. Like, I don't think that's the ideal situation to be put in. Unfortunately, uh, your second and third top tackle getters were, were both safeties, but they were called upon to do something and they did it. So I, I'd give them like an A plus, honestly. Yep. Okay. And, uh, and then special teams. I, I mean, it, it special teams is what's, um, I think, well, along with the quarterback, too, is what the uh, hurt them the most in terms of um, what the weather brought here. But I thought Mirko did an excellent job overall. A couple of those kicks that he had, it was just unfortunate bounce or unfortunate wind when he when he kicked the ball. But it, it, is, it is what it is. So I, I'd, I'd say like an A minus. Uh, yeah, that that's fine. Again, like it's hard to. Like like with CJ Stroud, it's almost impossible to give the kickers like a prop or and for the returners, too, because of, you know, Northwestern's kickers were dealing with the same crap. It's almost impossible to grade the special teams in this game. They yep. didn't make a mistake, so they get an yes. A minus. Yes. All right. All right. Let's give out some Buckeye leaves, Jared. And uh, we're going to start with the offense here. Who on the offense deserves a Buckeye leaf? Who on the offense deserves a Buckeye leaf? I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna give it to C.J. Stroud, the mm -hmm. the 76 yard run, or however uh, he had. How long? Uh, C.J. 44 yard run. 44 yard run. Um, broke the game it, open. Made it a made it a game. Yeah, it was the only play that went. Yeah, the only play in the entire game. That went over 30 yards. Yeah. Like, I, I really want people to understand that the 44. What was the second longest play? Uh, Mayan Williams touchdown of 27 yards. The longest plays in this game that I can find quickly were CJ Stroud's run of 44 yards. Mayan Williams run for 27 yards. Uh, Evan Hall. The Northwestern running back had a run for 17 yards. Oh, uh, Cam Porter had a run for 19 yards. So I guess that would actually be third place. One of, one of the two uh, runs, I guess they're technically called runs. Abuka had went for 15 yards and the longest reception of the game was 15 yards. The longest reception of the game was 15 yards. If that gives you any indication of what this game was. Yeah, um, I'll, I'll give the ball to Chop. I'll give it to Chop. Even playing hurt, 
definitely some definitely some times when it was questionable of which hole he should be um going to but i mean runs for over 100 yards in this game two touchdowns yeah i'd, I'd give it the chop here by the way how many people would have like at the end of the game when you first saw mine williams had 100 rushing yards over 100 rushing yards were you surprised I was a little bit from what I saw in the first half, but but the se second half was it just it opened it up for him. Yeah. All right, defense, Jared. On the defense side, I, I feel like he's just he's just stacking up trophies here or stacking up uh, Buckeye leaves from us, Jared. It's I I give it to actually I'll change it. Actually, I'm going to go. I'll go with Hickman. I'll go with Hickman in here. I was about to say Tommy Pickles, but I'm going to go with Hickman here. Uh, he had 10 tackles in this game here, made some crucial tackles. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll give with Hickman my Buckeye Leaf in this game. Yeah, I, I, I mean, if you're going to, I guess if you're going to let me pick Tommy Pickle Eichenberg, this was, this, this, this was that game. Like this, this is why you need a linebacker like like Eichenberg on the team is for for games like this. Mm -hmm. But yeah, Hickman yep. is also a solid choice. All right, and my wild card, I'll give I'll give I'll give it to Murko. I think I might have given it last <laughs> week. I'm going to give it to Murko here. Uh, he okay. He had se seven punts here, averaged fifty yards. Fifty yards. Granted, he had to punt it both ways, though. So I, I, I'll consider that averaging it out. So he averaged fifty yards per punt. I'll give it to Marco. Fair enough. Not micro. It's Marco. Not micro. Who's your uh, wild card? The Microsoft punter. Uh, I'm going to give it to Zach Harrison. I think he had another really nice game. Doesn't sh show up in the stat sheet the way that's been the case for a lot of the defensive ends this year. Um, but I'm going to give it to Zach Harrison, who I think is having a superb season. Yeah, he absolutely is. All right. And um, all right. And I think we have like one good one question here and then we'll call it we'll call it. Um, an episode, Jared, uh, Buckeye Esquire has a question for us. See you, Randy. Is it, is it, is it time? And I know you weren't wanting to, um, point fingers or point names, Jared, but, uh, Buckeye Esquire asks us, is it time to experiment with a different right guard? Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, when I, when I say there are individuals on the offensive line having issues, you know, I, what well, wasn't it after after <laughs> the penalty? After I think it was the second play. It was after the second play, and it was a penalty. Yeah, they took him out. Yeah, for a couple plays. Um, I uh, when we've seen Vamahi play in the past, he's played well. Um. I, I, I really hesitate to say I know better than the coaches who see these guys every day. Um, I, I'm, I'm always a little hesitant to say that. But. Yeah, Matt, Matt Jones struggles when it's a bigger defensive tackle, for sure. Um, he, he struggles and. Yeah, it, it doesn't it, he's had three games in a row in which he's he struggled he's he, there were yeah it's i i think it's probably worth attempting at a, at a certain point um and by the way and just i don't know to spread it out a tad and not to like single out jones i think whipler's been having issues playing as well you know, when we talk, when I'm talking about the interior of the offensive line. I am not talking about Jackson. I'll say, is that the nicest way I can say it? I'm not talking about Jackson. You fill, fill in the blanks from there. Um, I, I don't know if Ohio, I don't think Ohio State has a, has a center to, to put in. But 
I do think that they have, I know that they have Enoch Vamahi, who's, you know, exper- if nothing else, experienced and has been in the program for a long time and has played well when I've seen him. Mm-hmm. Yep. All right. Uh, we are here to win uh, ships, not please linemen. I agree with you, Matt. I'm personally, I'm always incredibly hesitant to like point fingers at specific like unpaid college athletes. Like I just, I don't want to come on here and like, you know, do the name and shame and, and, and like, I, so it's just a thing I don't like doing. The coaches are, are paid a lot of money to make decisions to win championships. I don't want them to be, you know, hesitant to make the right move out of loyalty or whatever. I'm I'm just not going to come on here and like rant and rave at a specific individual. And if for anyone wondering or anyone who's like maybe getting ready to fire off a comment, the fact that there's now NIL in place does not change my opinion on this whatsoever. They're still not being paid to play football. Yeah. The the university is not paying them. All right. I think that's it, Jared. I think we'll call that an episode here. You got anything else before um, we wrap it up? Um, no, no, I think we're good. Um, Kirk Buda says, yes. What's in, co- well, we're not there yet. Kirk, slow down, slow down. We're not there yet. Um, want to encourage everyone to uh, hop by the Patreon uh, we do have a Patreon. We're trying to get those numbers up a tad. So uh, it's only $3 a month. Um, and that honestly gets you a lot. Um, we had like our most like attended and active uh, social screen event, which we do all I've, every Saturday so far this year. Um, we had a ton of people in the in the watch party this week. It was fantastic. Um, do you guys have a mouse pad with a Sloopcast logo? I really want one for work. Uh, let me check. Let me, by the way, we have t-shirt stores. You can merch.thesloopcast.com and, um, 7071.thesloopcast.com. Uh, last I checked, they didn't have a mouse pad option, but I also haven't like checked in a while. So, let me go see if I am able to do that, Matt. And if I am, I will let you know. Uh, see you, Gangland. The time doesn't the time change doesn't take place where you are. That's that's fair. Um, so yeah, uh, check out the merch stores. Uh, check out our Discord server. Again, we had a wild time watching both Clemson and Bama lose in the in the in our uh, social screen, which is like a watch along party. It was wild. It was fun. Y'all should have been there. Uh, and you can be there. Uh, Discord.thesloopcast.com. Uh, Kyle, do you have anything in Kyle's Corner? Uh, kind of staying with the Buckeye theme here, Jared. Uh, Justin Fields. Justin Fields had himself a heck of a game on Sunday here. He rushed for 178 yards, breaking Michael Vick's record for um, a regular season running rushing yards by a quarterback. So you're saying that two Ohio state quarterbacks ran for more yards than they threw for this weekend. Yes, that is true. (laughs) Listen, when you play for Chicago and you have Chicago's offensive line, sometimes you just got to do what you got to do. Yeah. But unfortunately it wasn't enough for Chicago to win though. Well, you know, you you can only do what you can do, but you do what you got to do. Yep. That makes sense. That makes sense. No one question it. Tonight's ending music um, will be uh, by a Columbus bass band called Pray for Sleep. uh, The name of the song. That's right. I actually know the song ahead of time. I was feeling professional today. Uh, It's called Ask Us. 
So name of the band, pray for sleep, name of the song, ask us. So with all that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, support your local podcasters. Once again, this is Pray for Sleep. <laughs>